Welcome into the Night Shift Podcast, the emergency podcast, I suppose you could call it here, powered by the Black and Gold Banner. And of course, I am Kyle Nash, the student of the game. With me, the great, the incomparable Eric Lopez, the mighty Bryson Turner, and the shining gold of the new face, Don Struble in basketball guy Don Struble here. By the way, he's done a great job on the socials. If you notice some things looking different, looking like they're happening more often, is because we got him helping us out too, and he's been doing an awesome job. And I'm done doing my Jeff sharing impression, giving everybody flowers. Let's talk some instant reaction. We're a Big 12 school. We're excited about Big 12 basketball coming out. We finally, finally have a conference schedule. So now we have the opportunity to go over the schedule in its entirety. First, quickly, Bryson Turner, I'm going to have you guys talk about the uh, non-conference schedule first. And, and, you know, what you mentioned that is it for the, the classic tournament? They do have that spot filled. We don't have that here, but, or is that for the other side? So, yes. So the Orange Bowl Classic, because the non-conference schedule has been known for a while. They posted that a while back, but they had, had they did fill that schedule. Because at the time, I believe you. Who is believe it you, with, the, Brandon? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a, a it's a familiar foe of ours, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Are oh, be, boy. <laughs> they're going to be yes, Tulsa's going to be meeting with UCF on December 14th in Sunrise, Florida, 2 p.m. Eastern for the Orange Bowl basketball cla- classic. So, that is what the, so beyond that, we already know everyone else is listed on there. They also actually listed the uh, game times as well for these the non-conference games the rule is is that if it's a weekday game it's at 7 p.m and then if it's a week week end game then it is 4 p.m the only exception to this is jacksonville which is starting at 6 p.m on december 21st and of course that doesn't factor in road matches because those are completely different ball game like the greenbrier tip-off where we'll face either wisconsin what will face wisconsin and then either pittsburgh or LSU. I would say a pretty mixed non-conference slate between like, you know, some people that kind of like experiment a little bit, but also a few opponents that are really test this team. And actually, uh, I, I, I don't know how publicly we can announce some of this, but there's opportunities out there to where our own Eric Lopez may call some of these games in the event. Mark Daniels is unavailable. So make sure you look out for that. But, uh, Eric, when you look at this one jumps off, man, you're, 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 uh, you're been, you're the uh, old hat in this program. What what what? This is not your typical out of conference schedule. I think is safe to say. Well, no, I mean Texas A and M screams right at you. I mean Texas A and M probably will be a top twenty five team when we get to opening night. Uh, that doesn't happen often at the arena. So, could be one of the biggest home openers in the history of the program. I think that's a big time marquee with A and M. Outside of that, you got that tournament. Up in West Virginia, where you're playing Wisconsin to stay, play there, possibly LSU or Pitt. And then the Orange Bowl Classic, as you referenced, Tulsa there. But uh, I mean, AM, I mean, we're going to learn a lot right away. You don't, <laughs> you're not, Coach Dawkins ain't ducking anybody on opening night. Yeah, for sure. Don, tell me where you're at. Like, I know this is your first year with us covering UCF basketball. You've been a little bit of that due diligence jumping in. What's kind of your early? thoughts on what you expect and, and and what you see when you look at through this group or um maybe uh just any other thoughts you have initially on them going in well it's no surprise i mean this is going to be a very new group uh they have eight players from what i was able to count coming in from the portal this is also uh coach dawkins first season after signing the new extension and like eric said i mean we're getting right into it you're jumping in with a strong sec opponent in a and m and then going down the list here in non-con, I mean, that that Greenbrier tip-off is going to be serious, too. I mean, Wisconsin always puts up a nice team. And um, we're, we're going to see some formidable opponents throughout the first two months of hoops before getting into Big 12 play. And so I think this team has its work cut out for them, but I think we're up for an exciting season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're opening with a team that's nationally ranked like you're talking about. That's a big deal. Um, by the way, Welcome to the team, buddy. Right there into the fire you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here talking and with you course, guys. Yeah, the smart rumors, uh, it will be that October 9th is allegedly going to be media day. That's the whisper, so we'll see what happens there. Bryson Turner, what do you have, sir? 
So, you know what's funny is that there is one opponent that we have neglected to mention just yet that I feel like we might be over overlooking. They might they may have lost their head coach in the in the great Dusty May, but FAU, you know, coming right and coming not that long after Texas A&M. You have that Purdue Fort Wayne game between them to kind of, you know, see what you have, but between Texas A&M and F- FAU, that's a pretty that's a pretty tough opening week for this men's team. No, I think that's worthy mention that you have there. I, I think that's uh, that's that's something worth shouting out um, as well. Um, so, yeah, with that all in play, uh, Don, let me go to you here. I will have the graphic here up shortly for it. But the conference schedule is why we're here. This is what we're responding to. This is what we're excited about. You and I were talking off air about something that jumped you out of your seat immediately when you saw it. What was your initial reaction to that conference uh, slate? Yeah, so we're going to end the year with Texas Tech, but uh, we're starting the year uh, with Kansas on January 5th. And obviously UCF was able to pull off that upset win over the Jayhawks at home last season. Uh, This is going to be an even greater test as they will see Kansas not once, but twice in the same month. And so I think that, you know, this team is going to have to be ready. I mean, we there it's no secret that the Big 12 is a very, very strong basketball conference. Um, but yeah, that that Kansas twice in January really, really sticks out to me. Uh, that That's going to be exciting and difficult all at the same time. In fairness, it's well balanced by the fact that Oklahoma State is on here twice. They're still a, a basketball program in a shambles. I think that's one thing that could kind of balance things out. But Bryson, what, what do you see here? What kind of comes in uh, and brings you... Uh, 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 joy or fear. I don't know which. Well, I'm going to actually go uh, do a go divert a little bit from what you guys say. And I'm kind of nervous about that back end of this schedule because let's look at these last couple of weeks. You have Oklahoma State on the road, hosting Utah, hosting Kansas State. Then you go to TCU, you host Oklahoma State, and then you beat West Virginia. The only team in that last batch of opponents that made the NCAA tournament was TCU. Considering that this is at the back end of the schedule and West Virginia and Kansas state both beat UCF when they went to their places last year, West Virginia in particular, I am that might, those are, I think very big opportunities for trap games for this team at the end, because All right, Bryce, a- Bryce, 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 <laughs> we, listen, this is not football. We're not going to use nonsensical cliches like trap games. Not in this conference. Not well, in that we, sport. We there beat are... West Virginia in the standings, though, Eric. I mean, like, we can't Who be Who cares? They here. kicked our ass in Morgantown. <laughs> like, that's a, they we got to go back there everything. now. That's where we're going to end the season. You know, now that you... You got to you, you can't end the season on a sour note, Eric. You got the two teams, you got the two teams that we finished below that didn't finish ahead of us in the standings to end the season after going through the gauntlet of a schedule that this Big Twelve is going to provide. You what, want the gauntlet ain't good in the beginning for you? Who knows? We may have something on the line. The gauntlet's just as rough in the beginning. You got Texas Tech, <laughs> Kansas at home, Colorado. Arizona. You know what they all have in common? They're all in the NCAA tournament. You also got Houston, Iowa State, TC. I mean, this is, folks, hunker down is definitely the term to be used to describe this, this schedule. This is, the Big 12 is just bigger, larger than ever before. There's no gimmies. Um, bottom line, I, you could we could nitpick the schedule and everything. I do find it interesting that they're trying to do the Kansas as the home opener for the second year in a row. Uh, the question is, did you guys notice the date of that game? January 5th. Yeah, that's a Sunday. Kyle, what happens on a Sunday usually in that time of year? Well, I mean, you'll allege that there is no football that I actually watch, but I am typically covering the Jags and watching NFL football. <laughs> is, that week, is that week 17? Do you know offhand, in all seriousness, is that week 17? Off 18? the top, um, which weekend are you talking about? The the fifth? The week the Sunday, yeah. The Sunday where we bring back Kansas. Yeah. The regular, um, that's the last day of the regular season. I well, I was gonna say, yeah, that's eighteen, right. Which is as anybody that follows the NFL knows, that's a pretty important Sunday for the yeah, most time, more time yeah, than not. Yeah. You know. So I don't that and 
for those right now, this is the big the big news from the whole conference standpoint is that there's going to be Sunday games. Uh, Brett Yormark, the commissioner, wants more exposure. And one of the things you're going to see now is more Sunday games. So the Big 12 will air. It will be on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday. And, hey, guess who gets to have a few Sunday games? We do. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm all about more exposure, but how are you going to do that over the NFL? That's not how that works, Brett. What are we doing? It's called, I guess, counter-programming. Uh, but I don't I, – I understand your – trust me. I understand your uh, – perspective on that because you're right i am very curious with that kansas game we saw how packed it was last year on a you know opener and all that will it be as packed for that kansas game on a sunday uh, you know potentially going up against the nfl uh is going to be interesting if you can get the casual people or not i don't even i mean that's not even including if the magic are home i don't even know if the magic are in town or not that sunday but uh, the Sunday thing is going to be interesting because a lot of people complained about the Sunday games when we were in the American. Uh, now, there's no excuse this time. You got the Big 12. So that stood out to me right away is yeah. that Kansas is going to be on a Sunday. But look at that first two weeks, Texas Tech at Texas Tech on New Year's Eve. Nobody said, I mean, there's nobody that's saying, hey, let's see the ball drop in Lubbock, Texas. But that's, you know, what's going to happen. There. Um, but they're a tournament team. Uh, Kansas, I think, will be a lot better if they're healthy this year. They're obviously who they are. Colorado, NCAA tournament team last year. I don't know if they will be as good this year. They lost their players from last year. Arizona, first time, got to go up to Arizona. Then you got to go to Arizona State back-to-back. Then you host Houston, uh, which is on the Saturday the 18th, which that would probably be up against the NFL wild card. Oh, boy. Thanks, guys. Wow, what are you doing to me? Um, well, then the next that thing, Iowa, that's that's up against conference championship Sunday, buddy. <laughs> which one is that? Uh, TCU. Well, that's a Saturday, though. That's a Saturday. Is, it, is that Saturday? Oh, yeah. Okay. I misread. I thought it said the 26th. See, this is why I need my glasses. No, uh, no, yeah, you're right. So you're barely safe, but uh, but look at this. Yeah. Iowa, you go to Iowa State, that place is a been the toughest place to play in the conference. We didn't have to do that last year. You host TCU. Then you go to Kansas for the first time. Total cakewalk. Um, sure. <laughs> and then, oh, by the way, you come back and host BYU. So out of your first 10 conference games, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those 10 games are against NCAA tournament teams. Yo. This is what – this is why I say that that back part of the schedule is so important because when you have so many games that could be toss-ups against those, these NCAA tournament teams, you got to be able to try to take wins where you're going, you're conceivably going to be favored. And the best chance for UCF to be favored is going to be in that latter portion of the schedule where you face Oklahoma State, Kansas State, West Virginia. Well, and here's the part where I well, agree I disagree. With- I disagree, by the way. I strongly disagree. We will be a hundred dog at the doom or the octagon of doom in manhattan kansas that that uh, <laughs> uh oh no wait actually we host kansas state so maybe we will be favored uh west virginia is gonna be a lot more improved with uh, the new head coach and there's kid that's gonna be playing there uh the you know and that's at morgantown that's oof, that's tough and there look there's no gimmies i'm in a fetal position as i'm as we're as i'm looking at this schedule just that's all i'm saying no, that's uh, that's, and I think that that's what I was going to say. Where where the part, uh, Bryson, where the the contention is, wasn't so much your opinion of the back end of the schedule as much as it was your use of the word trap game in the Big Twelve. I think what Eric Lopez is trying to tell you is they're all traps except for it's a big your- movie. It's a big movie trap. Yeah. I yeah. speak re- I speak relatively. All right, I speak relatively. <laughs> it obviously they're all of this. I mean, in terms of the if. In terms of the elevation of Big 12 basketball, these are considered trap considered trap games in the elevated nature of Big 12 basketball. They're as close to them as we're going to get. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, and and well, I'll, let me ask you this too, Lopez. Let me let me give him a chance to defend himself too. Let me let me get let me let me advocate for Bryson. Oklahoma State, kind of uh, one of these things is not like the other kind of school in this conference right now. Yeah, but here's the problem. You're coming. You're going to be playing in Boulder, if I'm reading this correctly. Then you're going to Stillwater, Fair like point. that. That I mean, I'm. I don't. Obviously, we haven't spoken to the st- people there, but I'm wondering, like, will they have to fly to Boulder 
fly back, then to fly to Stillwater? Or do they go from Boulder to Stillwater? I mean, again, yes, Oklahoma State's probably going to be the weakest team in the preseason. Uh, but you got to go there. And then you're going there after you're going to Colorado in a, you know, in a stretch where you also have to go to Baylor. Uh, man, it's just this league is just thick. It's a it's just I, I don't take anybody in this conference for granted. There is no layups in this league. Um, and they got to play. You got to play well, regardless, or you're going to get beat. And you might play well and still get beat. That's what makes this league the number one conference in college basketball. Yeah, and I mean, I would imagine they're flying out on the 15th or 14th, which is a Friday or Saturday, and they're not even going to end up in um, Stillwater until the following Wednesday. I, I would assume they do it on the same trip, but it would seem crazy to me that they would go up and back like that. But I, I you, at some point, you got to practice, you know. Um, right, like I'm expecting, I'm assuming when they go to Arizona, they'll just stay there for prep for the Arizona State game. That's a guess sure. on my part. I don't know, but that's a, a lot of teams would probably end up doing that. It would stand to reason, especially when January 11th is in and of itself a Saturday. So they're already there on the weekend, you know, so I think that's now, an element too. Now, the know. good news is, the good news is you don't have to go to BYU uh, this year. Remember, you had to go last year where there was like a million fouls. So that's a positive. You don't have to go to Kansas State. So that's a good thing. I mean, that place is tough to play as well. Uh, if you're looking for positives, um I don't believe you go to Cincinnati. Is that correct? Yeah, you don't go to Cincinnati. You're hosting Cincinnati. Right. A lot of buzz about Cincinnati this year. I, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical how good they really are with West Miller, but they're pretty good. Obviously, they beat us twice, so we're not. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying from a national standpoint. Correct, um, yeah. So you do That's avoid some places uh, that are – Cincinnati's historically been a very brutal place for UCF in basketball. So, um, I mean, man, we got a lot of mileage. <laughs> I tell you. Let, the big winner is the, the airlines, baby. That's the big winner. Let's remember, by the way, that when BYU was last in Edition Financial Arena last year, that we lost them 63 to 58. So that's a five point loss. And then when we played Cincinnati at home last year, it was a 76 74 loss. That's a two point loss. So these are games that, that UCF was pretty close with last year. I think that having these two back to back will be very interesting from the perspective of how do they respond after that last time. But my eyes just trained to that first home weekend of both Kansas <laughs> and Colorado. I mean, with how Texas tech, of course, obviously is going to be a major one too, but I can't help but think about how, how different the, uh, the, the home court advantage was in addition to financial arena and games like the Kansas game. And now, you know, this, these two could conceivably be games where UCF can make can stake a claim for itself as far as a national standpoint to be like, hey, pay attention to us. We're better than last year, and those will be a very big weekend week week for them to do that. By the way, BYU worth noting: Mark Pope no longer there as the head coach. He's now the Kentucky head coach at his alma mater. So BYU also has a new head coach. So I think there's a lot of mystery about BYU going into the season with a new coach. So. Um, you know, that's a deal. Don, I want to ask you, what yes. games are you circling, sir? So you're going to be at pretty much almost all the home games. I don't want to play spoiler here. Uh, but yeah, I, I am. No, no, you're correct. Uh, well, rank them for of, me. Rank them, rank them for me. Which, uh, what, what jumps uh, out to you? You're putting you me on the spot here, Elo. You're putting me on the spot. But I'll no, do that's my what best. we do on okay, this show. So here. That's what I do. I, I think that, um, you know, it's no secret that, that, Home opener against Kansas is going to be number one. I think that UCF has something to they, – they have a chance to do something special. Uh, they have a chance to take them down again in the addition. Uh, and, you know, just three days after that, Colorado. And so you have a, you know, two-game stretch there where they're still going to be, you know, th this will be the introduction of the new core – to Big 12 play. And this is a team last year that finished 7-11 and 11 in conference play. So, Eric, like you said, there's going to be no layups here. Um, you know, this is also a team that finished 12th in scoring in the conference. And so we're going to need to see some off offensive prowess um, with this group uh, led by Jalen Sellers and Darius Johnson in the backcourt. Uh, but but to uh, to digress to your original question, I would say – 
for me right now, Kansas, TCU, Houston, BYU, Oklahoma State, Colorado, and then probably Kansas State. That's the best rankings I can give you. Well, right. Iowa State. I would not dismiss Iowa State. They are going to be, probably be a top 10, top 15 preseason team. When the Correct. And like you back. said, I mean, a, a lot of these teams were tournament teams last year. Yes. And so that, that this is not going to be an easy slate. It, it's just – it's simply not. But I think that – uh, Coach Dawkins, uh, he proved his aggressiveness in the portal for a reason. I think that they want to see some improvements offensively, and I think that they're going to get those improvements offensively, and hopefully they iron out all their kinks in the non-con games. But we'll see. It's going to be a really interesting time from New Year's Eve uh, until, you know, beginning of March. Well, by the way, for many long night, long time night fans might remember UCF hosted Colorado in the NIT in 2017 when UCF started that run that got him to the final four in the NIT. So it'll be actually the second time that Colorado will be playing in that arena. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, it's uh, the only bummer is you don't get Arizona to come here. That's a big brand. I mean, Arizona is a powerhouse. Uh, instead, you go to the McHale Center over there in Arizona. I mean, my goodness, UCF's going to go to Arizona and Kansas within a week of each other, guys. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, and at Iowa State. Like, it's yeah. um, it's just surreal. And, and you know, UCF went 7 11. Well, I don't know if teams are going to overlook them like maybe some did last year. I, th you know, that, so I think people will have them on the radar. Uh, Don, to your point about the offense, from what I understand from people close to the program, I think UCF has put a big emphasis on the offense this year. They're hoping to be more up tempo this year. We'll see, you know, it's. I'm sure we'll hear some of this uh, when we do have uh, our media days coming up here in the month of October. But um, it's just to see this. No big Monday games, which is a big uh, signature night that the Big Twelve has. But uh, so for those that don't like Monday nights, that's good. But I believe what is it ucf's got what a couple of sunday games i'm trying to break down by days so so the, the ucf's sunday games are their second green briar game that's going to be on a sunday well, Cal i'm just Baptist talking conference so just talking oh, conference. Conference. okay just conference. the only conference the only conference sunday games are going to be kansas on january 5th and then utah on february 23rd Okay, couple of Sundays. Uh, Everybody, pretty much, a mo most of everything else is going to be on is going to be on Saturday to or Tuesday. There are three Wednesday games: home against Colorado on January eighth, away at Oklahoma State on February nineteenth, and then home against Kansas State on February twenty twenty sixth. Oh, and home Oklahoma State on March fifth. So, aside from those two Sunday games, it's going to be either Saturday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Man, there's a part of me that wishes Kansas home game was a little later. I don't know, but I'm a little worried about that being the home opener Sunday on a Sunday when casual people are going to be probably watching the NFL. Maybe, Kyle, maybe we're too much involved in the football side. Maybe, it, hey, look, it's Kansas. You're going to have enough people. But I just, I wonder, you have Kansas right off the bat. That's a big, your big ticket as far as a sellout. Right. It's weird though on a Sunday, like you said, four o'clock. I mean, it's gonna. You mentioned that's gonna be a counter programming. That'll probably be, if I had to bet, an ESPN four o'clock game, for example. I could see something like that. We don't have, by the way, tip times or excuse me, TV listings yet. Uh, right. I yeah. It? yeah. So I'll, we, add we, we don't. I'll add this. I think they're banking on the fact that we're getting closer and closer to to being in a time and place where competition and, and on opposite this is mattering less and less, right? Sports, you hear about more and more sports fans. Well, I got this TV with this game on. I got this TV with this game on. And on the iPad, I'm watching this. And then on my phone, I have this. You know, like that's becoming a more widespread practice in the consumption of sport when there is appointment action going on there. You know, hey, I, 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 I'm, I, you know, I'm a loyal you know, I, I, well, I would say I can't say Dolphins or Jaguars right now, Eric Lopez, because both of those fan bases are thoroughly depressed. I think it's simple as that. But, you know, hey, Maker Bayfield, 
there in Tampa is doing great. I got to watch Baker Mayfield and these guys do the thing, right? But then Kansas is on, but I can do both. Or I have tickets to the Jayhawks game, but I can keep up with Tampa while I'm doing it. I don't know. There's any number of things. Well, like too. I said, it, it'll be interesting too because, I mean, on the one hand, the positive is you get Kansas early, so Kansas doesn't have a lot of material on you. On the other hand, you just beat them last year, and everybody's going to bring that up over and over again. So – uh, it's, I mean, sure guess, yeah, gonna bring it up. Uh, they're all going to bring it up. So look, I mean, that's, but that's life in the big 12, but man, to get Kansas, Arizona, Houston, you get Kansas twice, Arizona and Houston and Iowa state on the road. Cause I think Iowa state, remember Iowa state was an elite eight team last year. Mm-hmm. You got Easy them all three. within the, you got them all within what the first couple of first uh, seven, eight conference games. My goodness. Um, yeah, that that uh, yeah that week of January 11th through January 21st in those 10 day stretch, you're gonna face three Sweet 16 teams in Arizona, Houston, and Iowa State, all in that 10 day span, and all of them are, and only one of them is the ho- is the home game, which is Houston. Which, by the way, it's a good thing that we got Houston at home in that one because they they were keeping up with Houston. We were keeping up with them. I still remember. Eric, you and I walking from the Plex to watch the end of that game in addition arena. And UCF was putting up a pretty good fight up until the end there. So if there was any oh, place. It's a good point. Had- well, and, and it's a good point you bring up because UCF does not go to Houston this year, which is a rarity. Uh, usually they play a home and home this year. They only play Houston once. So you're right. That's a good point. I ra- If you're going to play Houston only once, you'd rather host them than go to Houston. That's actually favorable. Uh, so there are, things that are favorable like that it's just you know, offset you, it's just offset well, by arizona it's like it's sort of well, like that well, the home and i would say the home and away of like say iowa state you're going to get home and away and then you have colorado home and away but then and then you just have arizona and houston sort of as counterparts of really good of really good teams. you go on the road to face arizona and then you come home and you take on houston Nice little storyline here, Don and company. Arizona State, UCF going to Arizona State. Bobby Hurley against Johnny Dawkins. It's an all <laughs> coach. You got the Coach K connect, the Duke connections there, the all Duke matchup, the all Danny White hires. Bobby Hurley was a hire at Buffalo by Danny White when he was the AD at Buffalo. He hired Bobby Hurley to be the basketball coach at Buffalo. Danny left. Uh, Bobby Hurley left Danny White after Buffalo made the tournament to go to Arizona State. And, of course, Danny White, when he was at UCF, hired Johnny Dawkins. So look for a lot of Duke talk and Danny White talk when UCF plays at Arizona State with Bobby Hurley against Johnny Dawkins. That's a nice little uh, anecdote there, Elo. That's good. The more you know, right? That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Yeah, that's uh, the historic, historian Eric Lopez. So, but I, I and, think and what, what, Well, what's going to be interesting, too, when we UCF goes to Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, like – might be some late night tips, boys. Like, you know, after dark tips, like 10, 10 30 <laughs> tips. Like, watching basketball past midnight could be, uh, could happen a couple of times. Well, good thing I'm a night owl. Be ready to go. That's right. Ah, yeah. Night owl. Ah, good one, Don. Yeah. Um, so Try, yeah, I didn't, trying to avoid that. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Which, let me ask you guys this. If you had a free trip, if right now I'm saying, hey, you get a free trip to go to a UCF road basketball game. One game. Which one would you pick? For a road game? Road I game. I mean, how, how do you not say Kansas? Yeah. Maybe Baylor. Experience that environment. Yeah, that's Kansas. Bryce is still thinking hard. <laughs> he really is. I mean, you're right. I'm going to I, you know what, I am going to say, I'm going to say Morgantown. Uh, and that, and I think if only because I feel like th- that you want to try to be there in the, in the sense of try to neutralize the home court advantage as best as possible. Maybe that's on, that's on me. Maybe I just want to be a contrarian. Um, but I think I would say, I think if you had to give me one road trip, I feel like it would be, I, I, Feel like I'd wanted, I'd wanted, I'd want to do that. Kansas might be my number, my number two though, just because you guys like it so much. So there you have it. We have somebody on a, on record in America saying that they willingly want to go to Morgantown 
I thought <laughs> I thought this was purely hypothetical, Kyle. <laughs> so for uh, the great Bryson Turner to the formidable Eric Lopez and introducing the golden Donnie Docks. Don Schubel, this is Kyle Nash, a student of the game. Uh, we'll have our women's reaction up soon, so look out for that if you haven't checked that out yet. So for uh, all those guys, thanks for checking in. Until next time, everyone, class dismissed.